Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Good Stuff. I'm Kevin Billy, and as always, we appreciate you joining us here today. And I couldn't be happier to have today's guest to kick off the new season. I'd like to welcome head men's basketball coach at New Ohio State University, Chris Oldman. Coach, it's great to have you. It's great to be with you, Kevin. Looking forward to it. Hey, I just want to, I know we were talking a little bit about the NEI days. I want to go there right away, if you don't mind. Just kind of take me back to your days at, at Taylor and, and maybe fast forward to today. Like, what did you learn then? I'd be interested in hearing about, you know, what is something that you learned and you kind of took away that, that still sticks with you today and what you're doing at Ohio State? You know, I was fortunate, Kevin, and I, I think you were too, in that um, I, I was able to to kind of learn and play in a program that um, I, I think really helped me prepare prepare me for for the next step, uh, whatever that was going to look like. I, you know, when I played there and then ended up coaching there at Taylor under Paul Patterson, and then went to, to the Division One. Uh, ranks at uh, you know at Gardner Webb, which is a low major Division One program in North Carolina. You know, I I, f- I really felt prepared, and I, I felt prepared in every way, and um, I credit that experience and and obviously my my head coach for helping prepare me for you know what it was going to be like at at the next level. We can't talk about Taylor real quick before we don't talk about Silent Night. I mean, that's how it's really really cool thing and if I'm not mistaken I think was that your first year as GA that 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 started back in I want to say like 97 or something maybe or the the interesting story behind that is Steve Brooks who's a women's college basketball coach I think he's now at the Marion College in Indianapolis was the originator of that idea and um he probably didn't get enough credit for it um but he was the originator and we were on staff together. I was a GA. He was an assistant. Mm-hmm. Then uh, when he left to take a head coaching job, I became a, 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 a full-time assistant. So um, it was, it was early in those couple years that, you know, it was nothing like it is now. It was yeah. big, but it's a whole nother level. Now it's become yeah. a national, you know, story, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I just want to dive in a little bit to the process of recruiting for, for Ohio State. Um, what are you looking for specifically in a player? I, I know I know talent's a given, but are there certain things that matter to you and your staff that I, I would say maybe are non-negotiables? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, my brother's reading a business book by Warren Buffett right now, and he's in commercial real estate. And uh, we had this discussion about, he said, Tell me, because he was reading this this warm, I think a Warren Buffett kind of biography or autobiography, and um, it was talking about the difference or, or or the importance of talent versus those other qualities that we all look for as coaches, and which is most important, and which do you value more, and which is the best determinant of future success. Um, and you know, I pointed him to to the book by Angela Duckworth, Duckworth Grit that's right on my desk here because that's probably the most comprehensive study when you look at um, the qualities that make successful players successful or at least the ability to reach their own potential. And um, uh, that is a quality that, that we don't always nail in recruiting, but it's something we're looking for. Have they experienced hard things? Um, there is a, a talent uh, requirement to playing any level of college basketball, right? And then the higher level you go, the higher the talent requirement is. But such a big part of, of, of a player's potential is how they can experience, I think, a couple of things. How they handle difficult things, <clears throat> and, and this goes into it, and their maturity level. So we're really trying to evaluate those two things. How do they handle difficult experiences as a player and as a person? What is, how have they been trained and what is inside them that allows them to to handle those with perseverance um, and with the necessary grit? And then uh, what's their overall maturity level? Because immaturity we know is a great predictor uh, of players not reaching their potential. 
and um, or at least not reaching it, you know, in a fashion that would be a, a timely enough fashion. Some guys eventually figure it out, but um, those are two things we look for. That's really good. I'd love for you to tell me a little bit more about your ability to connect. I think it is so key uh, anytime, I guess, even if I went back 25 years ago as a coach, but especially now with today and just having the ability to do that at a leader and on so many levels, right? But it just, you know, knowing Ryan and just seeing the program from afar, it just seems like you're, you're doing a tremendous job of connecting to your staff, your people, your players. So, so give us a little insight to that, would you please? Well, it, it helps having a great staff like Ryan Peden and, and Jake Diebler and, and Tony Skin, who we just hired. Terry Johnson was terrific, who's now at Purdue, and Mike Nettie and uh, on down the line, right? The guys that uh, – with Terrence Stiles, who's a former player, guys where relationships matter. Um, I think authenticity with players is, is as important today – um, as it's ever been, and probably more important because there's so much stuff that's not real <laughs> in our world um, that's not true, um, that uh, maybe is not what it seems. Um, and I think young people value authenticity mm -hmm. uh, sure. and, and it builds trust. And it's what we try to do uh, when, when we build relationships for me, I have to work at relationships because I'm I'm in a job that is demanding and pulling on me. But I'm probably bent a little more towards an introvert than an extrovert. I don't know. It, it, you know, the job wise, it, it kind of requires a certain level of that. But but I think uh, it's it's there's an intentionality to it, and then it's just um, it has to value to it. It has to matter to you. Um, and it has to matter to your program. Um, and then I think there's an authenticity required for your players to say, you know what, I can get behind that guy uh, because he seems real to me. Yeah, for sure. That's good. And, and I would object to some others listening to. I, I think one of the things I've noticed as well is just some vulnerability, right? And, and just letting people know whether you're struggling with something or whether you want something. I think people can relate to that. So, if anybody's listening, I, I just encourage more leaders to do that because I, I think that's a key trait and something. That's that a really, see. it's a great point, and it's a really hard thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Brene Brown has this great book on vulnerability in this, in terms of leadership, and this, uh, you know, TED Talk and a great, great book uh, about the power of vulnerability and what it does in the in the whole real, uh, real dynamic of relationships. Mm -hmm. I, I've shared this story. Our first year here, we played we played Butler, and I had just left that program, and we had just left that program months prior, um, and uh, I had taken over a new team, and it was a surreal experience because you you love the kids that you were, you know, competing against, and when they were struggling, you had really it was it was an odd feeling. You know, normally you got no real empathy towards the other team when you're drilling them. Uh, we did here and we were up by 15 or 12 or whatever it was, double figures late. And we collapsed, just collapsed. They ended up winning. They did a great job. They ended up winning. And it was a super emotional game and super emotional moment. And um, I think for for me, you know, there was a moment in the locker room where I had to be really vulnerable with our guys about, you know, my inability to help get them to where they needed to get to in this game, just because I think my emotions were just in a, a lot of different places. And I just didn't perform well in the last couple of minutes. And I think at the end of probably that served us well, we, we went 15 and three in the big 10. It was a down year in the big 10, but I think it served us well later. I think it was an important moment in our relationship as a first year together yeah you never it seems like you never recognize those moments in the present you have notes on yeah. later right to go through some of those things i think this would be good a good time to inject something that i've heard uh man we, we've had you know ryan was on here coach ryan was on here coach Dressel, so it's good to have, good to have another buckeye on here but one thing i love that you say um I just have an enormous amount of respect for a coach. It's I want to be at a place where I can coach to my convictions. 
Um, just, just what does that, what does that mean for Chris Holtman exactly? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think, um, we grow up right with you did, I did with certain convictions about how we want, um, uh, our, how we want to live and how we want to program to operate and how we want to coach. And, um, doesn't mean there's not flexibility and that you don't learn. And that's an ever evolving process, but there are certain standards that, that I don't want to ever compromise on. Um, I want to coach our best players as hard as we can possibly coach our best players. And I understand that, that uh, not everybody's the same, but I, I want our, our best players to, to be coached at, at, at a high level. That's something I don't want to compromise on. Um, I want our guys to be, to, to, to like value the education here. You know, that's important to me. I want them to value, value their educational experience here. Um, so that, that, that's, that's one of the things we're, we're value. I want our, our team to, um, to, to play together and to have a, an unselfishness in how we play. And you, again, you're always evolving and changing, but there are certain things that we don't want to compromise on. And, um, I think for me, I also, you know, quite honestly, I want to try to do it as much as we can within the rules in the right way. It's not to say you don't break some, rules that you don't know of or whatever, but within the rules in the right way. So all those things are, are things that, that in many others that we feel convicted about as a program. And i I just said, I want to be at a place where I feel like I'm empowered to do that. Kudos to you on that. I, can, I guess what I'd be curious to know then is what keeps you grounded in that? Is, is that a mindset? Is it faith? Is it certain perspectives? Is it upbringing? What, what is it? Because I think in that world, it's, it's so easy to get off those tracks where you have a bad year, you're not getting the certain players you want, whatever it might be. We can talk about, we probably do a whole podcast on that, right? But I'd be curious just to know, like, what is it that keeps you grounded? Well, I think it's, and I've shared things with coaches I respect, um, and they've shared things with me, um, you know, um, that that are pivotal pivotal conversations regarding just what you're asking. How do we stay on track with kind of what we believe to be our convictions and our mission as coaches? You know, uh, I got in this because I love the competition involved, but I also got in this because uh, we wanted to be um, player driven. And we really wanted, when we talk about loving our players, we really wanted to be about that. So, you know, I shared recently uh, uh, to uh, a fellowship of Christian athletes um, lunch uh, or dinner, and um, it was a big event and there were a lot of people there. And it was a lot of fun to be able to just kind of share some things that I had been trying to challenge myself with, but I kept saying to them, hey, there are big world things and there are small world things. And as a coach, what, what I'm trying to do is focus as much on the big world things, uh, loving and about our players and, and putting them first and caring about them first. Um, and then obviously all the personal big world things, valuing our family and our relationships and our faith, whatever it is, you know, long-term big world stuff versus the stuff that, 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 that really doesn't matter. Um, and, um, I, I, you know, I hope that we, I, it's really hard because I, I lose sight of this a lot during the season, just a lot. You're, you're thrown difficult moments. And as a head coach, you take a lot of body blows, um, and you just lose sight of these really real powerful, big world stuff that, you know, is kind of your mission to begin with. And, and hopefully, whether it's a person in your life or your staff or your faith, uh, that can guide you in those moments. Yeah, for sure. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and not being a coach, I feel like I have a lot more time for that now, obviously, but uh, you do be caught up in everyday things. And I think for me, you know, just that quiet time and, and just being able to reflect with all those things. Because like you said, those things are really important. Like family, you know, I, I think I heard, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it's, uh, I mean, it's evident that family is a big part of your program. And I heard that even when you bought your house, you know, you wanted to make that close so that it was an extension of the players in the lounge or the locker room, correct? 
Yeah, we did. We, we did not want to live far. And uh, we put in a pool basically for, for our players. Uh, now they use it, you know, four five, six times a summer, maybe not. It's not like they're over there every weekend. They could be, but you know, they don't want to be at the head coach's house every weekend, but we did want to want to be a place where it could be 10 minutes from campus and uh, they could come and go. And honestly, the, the, the longer they've come there, the, the, the longer they, you know, sometimes they'll stay for two and a half hours. Um, our staff also does a great job. You know, I, I really applaud guys that on our staff, you know, Jake Diebler's had his, you know, his position group over a ton at his house. Um, and those, those moments where you're bringing your players into your family mm-hmm. environment are really critical. Um, so yeah, we, we, uh, we made that decision and part of it was the commute, but a big part of it was, we wanted our place accessible, our home accessible to our players as much as possible. That's awesome. You know, one thing, I guess maybe sometimes I just assume what that makes a given my talent like we just talked about, right? But I, I think people will rave about yours. I'd be interested, uh, you know, I, I've read about the paper route and cleaning buildings with your dad. Um, I, I got to think, was that how it was developed? You know, give, give us a little insight to that. Is that just where you recall, hey, this is just how it's going to be and always be? Yeah, you know what? I It's, um, and I'm sure you're the same way. We're so much a product of our environments, right? And you probably reflect back on your upbringing and say, you know, I, I took so much from the way my my family raised me. And, and so my, my dad was an optician, which basically means he worked in a place where he fitted people with eyeglasses. And um, uh, it was during the eighties when there was, a the economy wasn't great and he didn't get a raise, uh, any percentage of the raise for seven years. And, um, uh, it was fine. We, we were, food was on the table and, um, but in order, I think for, in his mind, for him to say, okay, I'm going to have to play, pay for college. And how do I continue to do this? We, <clears throat> we had to get a paper route we had to get a cleaning job. And so we would do, do a paper out in the morning and he would go to work and then we do a, a cleaning job. Uh, somehow my, my older sister got out of a lot of that, that stuff. Uh, uh, but, uh, that's a whole nother story. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, it was a, it was a pivotal, I reflect back on that and look at, um, you know, you don't notice at the time you probably felt the same way, but you just say, man, that was inspirational. His, uh, his work ethic and his drive. And um, I think all of us that have kids right now, we're saying, okay, how do we not miss that with our own kids? Uh, because we're at a different place financially than we, than I was growing up. So it's something mm-hmm. my wife and I are consistently talking about, but it's, you know, I think it, it was probably created then. Two things, Brian, to inject on top of that. No, ironically, I had a paper out as well. And I can tell you the one thing it made me appreciate. It's something I would preach to my boys now, 14, 12, and six, and two older ones when they don't want to do their ball handling or whatever. It's easy to do it on the days you feel like it, right? Man, there was days I didn't want to do that paper out and dad pushed me out. And it just, I think the availability, this this kind of connects back to what we were talking about earlier and just you, family man, and your your program, all of that. Like, just if, if, we're, if we're able to be available. I remember my dad driving to, to Rio Grande on a Tuesday night and not seeing me until 10 o'clock and then driving home and getting home at 2, 2, 30 and getting up at 5 to go to work, right? So a lot of those things just stick with us and are embedded in us. You, you touched on this. A little bit. Go ahead, Jeff. Some coach. No, yeah, I wanted to share this with you. So this, along, you know, I love this definition of discipline because as you're thinking about that, that was something that you learned uh, growing up, and you're trying to teach your three boys right now. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to share this with our players. This was a, this was a pastor who shared this. Discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. Uh, discipline is choosing what you want most over what you want now. And I think, you know, that's all of what we're trying to do, right. Is, is help our players understand this uh, certain, certain really important values like work ethic and consistent discipline. Um, And then if you do that, you know, all the things that you've dreamed or hoped or a lot of the things you dreamed and hoped about uh, you have a chance to accomplish, you can position yourself to potentially accomplish them. Um, And thank God for, you know, 
those experiences. We ran the mile as a team right before we let, I let them go for the, the summer for like two or three weeks. And, um, you know, they hate the mile. You probably hate it. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. It's four laps of sprinting. And I was just reminded, I said, hey, fellows, thank God you had some in your life today before eight o'clock, actually, before 730 in the morning that was so challenging for you and so taxing on you that it made you push beyond what maybe limits you felt like you had. Because if you go through days, multiple days, multiple weeks, and you don't have those things in your life, you are limiting your personal growth. You are absolutely limiting your personal growth. So, you know, it's, it, those are those things that we didn't like, um, like paper routes, no, no question helped define us. I'm not a runner anymore today. I would just come in and meet that time since I couldn't pass out. But, uh, <laughs> I, I think this is something any leader or any person for that matter kind of goes through. We touched on this a little bit before. Um, I mean, do, do you have any best practices or how do you deal with stress, Coach? And I know you have a lot of it and I know it comes and ebbs and flows, but, but is there anything that you can give the listeners when it comes to this topic? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, regular exercise. Um, as simple as that sounds, uh, is, is really, really important uh, for me. Um, I have changed my belief on sleep and I've tried to prioritize sleep uh, for me, um, as much as I can, you know, we, you and I probably rem- grew up in an era where it was, you know, as a coach, it was like, you weren't working if you didn't say you only had five hours of sleep last night. Um, but I think for me, uh, the importance of trying to get seven uh, or eight hours of sleep uh, as possible and creating a, a, a situation where I'm, I'm allowing myself to do that um, and all the things that goes into that. So exercise, sleep. You know, I, I, I uh, have never been huge um, in a meditation, but it's a practice that I'm, I'm going to begin um, I've, I've dabbled with it here and there. And, and by meditation, I think it's uh, in some cases, it's a regular quiet time or devotional time, but I also think there's a there's a, a meditation that's important. Um, those those are the area. And then you know, in the past, and and uh, I've had someone that I can talk to about it. Uh, quite honestly, that I can have conversations with that aren't you know necessarily family or staff, but someone who I know can give me maybe just some. Um, some thoughts on how I can manage it best for our staff and our players, because, you know, I think a a stressed coach is usually a stressed team. Um, And I think, uh, you know, Tony Bennett's line, calm is contagious. Mm -hmm. I think, I think there is a, um, an element that you have to provide a level of that for your, your staff and your players. That's, that's for God, Coach. I, I think there's a lot in there. I know at least the sleeping for me is nice because I don't wake up in the next morning and that pad has something scribbled all over it that I did at three in the morning, some secret play. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't miss that part of it. But yeah, I, I would just like to to endorse the, the meditation quiet time too. And, and we've talked on here a couple of times before. I know I have an accountability partner in my life, and it's just so crucial. I, I think it's so crucial for anybody to, to have that. Well, what about obviously we're, we're in COVID, but just in your world, right? There's there's one and done. There's, there's the, the transfer portal. There's the name and the likeness. I think at the end of the day, when I think of all those things now, you just have to be adaptable, right? You can choose not to be, but you're going to be left behind. So, what what are some some ways or, or uh, some things that you've done individually or your staff now? How how have you been adapting through this time and all those things to college basketball? That somebody listening can be like, yeah, that's that's something I can use now from my job or this certain transition that maybe they're going through that you know is uncomfortable or they don't like right now and want to resist. Yeah, it's a good question. I think I think as much as as much as anything, I've tried to have a really open mind about these things, um, and I think. We can all have opinions about about certain things, but I think one of the things that we lack in our society today is the ability to maybe have a perspective and a viewpoint and yet um, be open to at least hearing someone else's Mm -hmm. viewpoint and and really listening to that. So 
Uh, when it comes to NIL, for example, um, I always felt like it was um, overdue and, and needed. Um, but I've really had to, uh, I think, just take stock of, of in talking to other people and other programs and other coaches. I've had to talk, take stock of, okay, how are they utilizing this within their program? Um, and what are the, some of the things they're doing to, uh, as you said, adapt into this, this new world? I think the same thing uh, really started five years ago when, when transfers started to become a regular part of what we were doing. And, you know, I think for, for us, we've had to normalize, you have to normalize it to some people because uh, I, I think people can be set in certain ways. They can have opinions maybe about, you know, transfers that just aren't uh, maybe as, as contemporary as they, they should be. Uh, so there's an education required with all that. Same with, with NIL. This is, um, as, as our compliance have said, this is um, the, the new age of college athletics. And uh, in order to thrive at the highest level, um, there's going to have to be an understanding of that. And I, you know, I've, I've welcomed um, uh, parts of it. I think the, the idea of the transfer situation uh, makes your job more challenging. There's no question. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, it can also provide uh, the opportunity. It can also provide opportunity in a lot of ways. Yeah, love, love the perspective. And you mentioned a couple of books on here. If we wrap up before we get into the three pointers, we talk about books on here a lot. I love the read. You know, maybe you got a favorite one you want to plug, or, or just put some ways you're growing right now, Coach. Yeah, so a, a couple books right now that I'm reading. Um, I just finished The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. My and favorite book, Coach. Is it really? I've been giving that out to a lot of guests. I would have sent it to you, but now I'm going to find another one. What a yeah, book. No, no, I'm right there with you. It it's challenging in so many ways, as you know, Kevin. And um, you know, it is. It's it's deeply. You know, it's 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 a book about faith. But mm -hmm. I I think if you're not a person of faith, you can still take a ton awesome. from yeah. from this yeah. book. And and uh, there are disciplines that people of faith, you know, incorporate, uh, but. But I think you can take a ton from that. And it was really challenging for me. My, my uh, a pastor gave it to my brother. My brother gave it to me. Um, you know, I love grit, uh, but that's that's one I read a couple years ago. And then um, uh, Tony Bennett recommended Soul Keeping to me on the road. So I, I, uh, I'm, I'm reading that uh, right now as well. Good, good thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great book. And just one other thing too that I'm thinking of right now, what, what, what gives you energy back? Right What's exciting? What's on the horizon? What, where are you at at this point of not only the season, but your life? Well, as you know, this is the best time of the year. This the fall is the best time oh, of the no. year. It, it, uh, the weather, um, every, but the anticipation of the season, uh, you don't have any kids or parents upset with you right now because, you know, they all know their kids are going to play 40 minutes. Um, um, so it's the best time of the year. Um, so it, it, you know, I think what I really enjoy and what, what, what honestly gives me, um, a, a lot of uh, fulfillment right now is seeing our players grow, being with our players, uh, seeing our players grow and uh, grow as people grow as players get better. Um, and, and all that goes, goes into that. Uh, seeing our staff, you know, experience things uh, professionally is, is really fulfilling to me. Um, you know, I, I think those are those are real things that, that per, per, you know, provide great, um, you know, great joy for me right now, particularly in my job. As far as, you know, uh, family time, too, I, you know, obviously um, I really enjoy enjoy family time. And I love, love, love college football. So I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to these next couple months. Yeah, for sure. Good. Well, hey, we're, we're going to go uh, rapid fire finish, but take take as long as you need to. If anything, you feel like you sure. share more. Three pointers. So I'm going to let you spot up in the corner and audition to you here for three shots. Uh, 
Number one, if, if people could learn one thing, if you want them just to take away one thing from our time today in this talk, what would you want that to be? Um, I think uh, maybe just the importance of authenticity in relationships and, um, you know, how, how valuable that is. Good, good. Number two, if, if, if Coach Holman could have come over here today and Kevin Billy and asked Coach Holman a question, what question would have you asked him that I did not ask today? Um, hmm, that's a great question. That is a great question. Um, probably uh, areas that, that I really struggle with in this profession. Um, you know, I think those, those are always insightful things and, and require, as you mentioned, some vulnerability on, 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 uh, on my part. But, you know, struggles as a leader, you know, I think are always, are always uh, that's always probably an interesting thing that I like to know how are leaders struggling right now. Right, right. That's good. Is there is there anyone that comes to mind that you, you would be open to sharing? Um, you know, I think um, I, I think the um, probably the 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 biggest thing that I struggle with, um, honestly, is kind of what you mentioned is is. Um, the stress management part of our job yeah. and all that goes into that. Um, yeah. I think that, and then I think, um, yeah, just think all that goes into that. I, I think all that makes sense. Well, hey, finally, good stuff is the name of this coach. Uh, I'd like to take credit for the son who's our six year old. So uh, <laughs> give us, some, give us some good stuff in closing. Anything you feel is appropriate right now, please. Well, you know, I, I just, I one, I appreciate what you're doing. I, I think, um, you know, the, the people that I've been most challenged by and impressed with in my life um, have been people who have really been driven by, by growth, uh, you know, spiritually, uh, personally, in their life. Uh, they are consistently challenged by, by growth and, and how they can improve, um, you know, better leaders make better coaches. There's no question about that. And better humans make better leaders. So I think for you know for us, what what you're doing is a great service because it's hopefully um, going to be inspirational to people who were driven by this idea of okay, how can I move forward in my in my life as a as a as a professional, as a husband or a wife or a coach or a business person. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, this is a great. Uh, a great opportunity and a great service to people. And I would just challenge people who are on that path uh, and driven by growth to continue on that path. Yeah, that's great. Well, and I know I got better today, coach, just, uh, just in spending some time with you today. I grew and I know the people that are listening to this school will definitely appreciate your, your insight, your time here. Hey, just, just in closing, you know, can you tell our, uh, our listeners where to connect with you, maybe personally social media, if they want to see a dunk like last night or anything like that, just where, where can they get online to check you out? Yeah. So, um, sure, sure thing. I gotta, I gotta pull up my, I think my Twitter handle is just, uh, um, at Chris Holtman, C-H-R-I-S-H-O-L-T-M-A-N-N, uh, at Chris Holtman. And then my, my Instagram, my public Instagram profile is on there as well. Um, and, uh, you know, feel free to, you know, I try to engage as much as possible. Coach Holtman is my, my Instagram. Um, you know, I try to engage with people as I can, um, as you, you, you would expect during the season, it's kind of almost uh, shut down. I go into a little bit of what LeBron calls his playoff run there with, with, uh, with no social media, but uh, yeah, uh, feel free to connect in, on those socials that people would like. Well, Coach, hey, thanks so much for your time, man. This, this was really fun. Uh, I, I think you provided a ton of value in this episode. Um, just having a little insight to the program. I, I just have a, I have a ton of respect for you as a coach, more so as a person. I, I just have a great deal of admiration how you do things and the impact that you're, you know, you're making down there in that huge city. And 
I was at the Stetson games a couple of years ago knowing Donnie Jones. So didn't get to yeah. the games last year, but I hope to get down there sometime soon and uh, check things love out. That. Wish you guys all the best. So thanks again. Yeah, we'd love to have you, Kevin. And thanks for thanks for what you do for coaches and, and for leaders. Appreciate it and uh, be well. Yep. Well, hey, everybody, thanks again for listening. Until next time, good stuff.